unicorn design where the unicorn does wiggle a little bit. There's a little spring attaching the unicorn to the nail. So if you just kind of flicker a little bit, the unicorn will switch. It's actually a Pegasus unicorn because she's also got wings. This whole design is very pink, blue, and purple. I love it. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. And don't forget to click subscribe so I like future videos as well. We are going to begin by creating that gorgeous background of an ombre from blue to pink. I started with the blue near the cuticle area, the pink at the tip, and then I'm going to fill in the middle with the purple. If you cannot tell, this is incredibly thin acrylic. This is not meant for strength or for structure or building up nail shape or length. This is specifically just for the color. After I have that, I'm going to fill in some little white clouds. Same thing, very thin acrylic. All these layers are super thin so that the entire nail doesn't end up to be too thick once the different layers are applied. Then using some iridescent star-shaped ghost glitter, I'm going to be applying those here and there throughout the background, and then a few bright white glitter or star-shaped glitter pieces. Now I'm going to encapsulate the nail with a layer of clear acrylic. You really need to make sure that when you're encapsulating with clear acrylic over the top of shapes like these stars or any bigger shape, whether it's sculpted to shape or glitters that you've embedded in the nail, you need to use slightly wetter acrylic than you normally would because that will envelope the glitter and it'll make it so there's no air bubbles around it. It'll flow around them, which is what you need. Now I'm going to file the nail into shape with my e-file, making sure everything is nice and nice and smoothed out. Now to start sculpting the unicorn. On a nail form backing, I'm going to start with her head. This is one of those situations where you need to make an effort to make things smaller because we're doing an entire unicorn body. And with that, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And it's very hard, at least for me, it's hard to get the head the smallest, as small as it needs to be in the beginning, just because you know you don't have that entire body picture. And to get it all so it fits and it looks appropriate on the nail, just in your mind, know to make it smaller than what you think you need to. So I'm going to sculpt this so that it's like she's facing the camera a little bit, like a, a three quarter turn. And so we've got kind of the barrel chest is what's forward. It looks really awkward right now. <laughs> and so we're gonna do um, the head and then neck down, then kind of like I said, the barrel chest into belly and then that hind leg and then the other hind leg. When you are sculpting something like a unicorn on a nail form backing and you're doing all of these crazy little details, be patient with yourself. Take your time, go slowly. These legs are very muscular. That's something that you wanna make sure you add in. I'm going to sculpt the arm or the front leg that is behind, so the one that's further away first. That way when I go to sculpt the other one, it can overlap and it can be on top of it. I'm going to be adding in all these details. The color I'm using is an absolutely stunning shade of pink. It's got these gold flakes in it, which is actually picked up by the camera amazingly. Usually those little glitter, if they're subtle, the camera doesn't see, but this one, the camera super sees. It doesn't look that glittery at all in person, which is funny. It's a lot more subtle than that, um, but it's just such a pretty color and it has this like other world, otherworldly dreamy feel to it to me. It's one of my favorite colors and I don't have many opportunities to use it. So I was very glad. I was like, you know what? This, this would make a beautiful unicorn body. So we're going to do that. I'm going to build up another layer to the belly. So after those legs are done, after that base is done to everything besides that front leg, go through and just thicken up areas. You want this to be super dimensional, very, very real looking. And so after you do the first layer, it's all very thin and it doesn't have that 3D wow factor to it. So then go through and start adding more. You're gonna wanna really press in at that hip crease of the leg that's forward. That'll give that more of a separation between body and leg. It'll also sell that forward facing look a little bit more. So you wanna make sure that you, like I said, you wanna press your brush in, scoop out that hip crease. Add more to the head. Add the second arm. When you're sculpting any horse thing or any unicorn in this situation, their shoulders are so muscular. So same thing with their hips too. I sculpted an extra little bit of muscle for the hip, but for the shoulder as well, make sure that you really sculpt a nice, a nice little bit of muscle bulk there. Add that second leg coming forward. I do want to mention that I did not keep the leg, the first leg that I sculpted, the one that is behind this one, after I was working on it further, I did change those up a little bit. So if you're looking at it, you're like, yeah, that doesn't look exactly the same. That's fine. And as I'm mentioning this, I also want to stress the point that it's okay to have art that you need to fix. That's something that I feel is one of the biggest holdbacks for a lot of people for starting something is the looming threat of what if it doesn't turn out well, or what if it doesn't turn out how I expect it to. And you know what? That's okay. That's that's fine. That's when you learn something. That's when that art really makes an impact on the rest of your art is when something goes wrong. So embrace those mistakes, fix them, move on and enjoy it because you know, 
it's not the worst thing. Maybe scary. I, you know, sometimes it's getting over that mental block. That's the hardest part. So after we've got that pink part and it's everything on the body done, or at least done to this point with bright white, I'm going to be adding the mane and I'm also going to be adding the wings. So that bright white is going to allow me to paint in all of the little colors that I'm going to be using, all the blended colors that I will be using to add the details. And bright white is a super strong color. Uh, bright white natural colors like um, from, a, from a company that sells sculpture acrylic, sculpture colors are going to be the strongest. And so if you want these wings to be a little bit more durable, starting them out with bright white is a great way to do that. The other thing I'm going to do with that bright white is add in the tail bring that tail down, nice fluffy little mo movements. When you're kind of flicking your brush out with the acrylic, some acrylics will do that without any question. They're like, yeah, that, that works out for me, which this is one of them. Some of them don't like to do that. They'll kind of like pull and stretch or maybe almost a crumble texture. If that's the case for your acrylic, don't um, try to pull it out quite the way I did. Just allow it to, to press and move the way that it wants to. I'm going to add the second wing. As far as perspective goes, the wing that is behind our unicorn's head is going to be significantly smaller than the wing that is in front or the one that's on, you know, the other side that attaches to the shoulder. So when you're sculpting these, in order to keep the perspective, also to really sell that three quarter turn, you're going to want to really, really sculpt that second wing larger. I'm going to add some of the feathers going down over the unicorn's rump. Same thing, just like what I did with the tail with the little motions, I'm going to be sculpting in little textures into the wings as well. Once you add acrylic paint on top of that, all of those textures that are sculpted in are going to be, um, I don't know, intensified. With a burgundy, I'm going to be adding hooves on my unicorn. I'm going to be doing actually quite a few details on the unicorn itself with this burgundy color. So starting with the hooves, I'm going to be adding adding that and then also like on the tip of the nose to darken up the nose area just look at some pictures of unicorns or horses or anything that is you know if you want to just look up a pegasus sure just find those areas on a horse that to start out with are darker don't worry about the shading but just like the automatically darker areas there's always that nice little dark patch on a horse's nose if they're like a solid color and it's super soft, so, so soft. I'm going to be adding that across there. Flat one, instead of having sharper lines like on the hooves, I'm going to blend it out. And then using that same color, I'm going to be adding my shading on, on my unicorn, wherever I feel like it needs it, especially that hip crease. We're gonna go back to that hip crease. Um, and you know, down the inside of the legs a little bit, just any place where you need to have shading. Same thing, look at some photographs, look at some different uh, art examples that are out in the world just to see where in this position, a horse or a unicorn would require some extra shading, figure out where it is. And otherwise, if that is, you know, you wanna just kind of find it for yourself, imagine your light point, figure out where the light would be hitting, what it would hit first, what it would, what would be darkened, and go from there. I'm going to be adding that other hoof on the front leg. I didn't do that one immediately because after I was working on the one right next to it, because they do touch, then it wouldn't have gone very well because it would have messed up the first one working on the second one. That being said, that whole leg did, I did remove and re-sculpt. So it's still not necessarily the way it looks in the end. We're going to add a little bit of shading on the back of that leg. That's the one that's more forward. forward. And then after you have that, I'm going to be using some acrylic to wash over my wings. So I used a mix of acrylic and acrylic paint to start with. I'm going to use a purple acrylic to go over the top of the wing just to wash over it. Like I said, that acrylic will settle into those textures and it will really amplify them. Same thing, I'm going to take some blue and I'm going to go over the tail and blue over the mane. You can use the same colors to do the wings and the mane, but if you do, they won't look quite as separate from each other. It's nice to have kind of that distinguishing color change pink body, purple wings, blue hair. Also, I want to mention I, at this stage, forgot to give her her horn. So you'll see after the nail is further assembled that I will add the horn and how to do that. It's the same process for if I would have done it right now. I just did it later. I'm going to add more purple and more blue here and there to darken up areas that I felt like, again, just like how I added the darker shades of the burgundy across the unicorn's body, add more layers of these shading colors on top of the wings and the mane to add that little bit of darkness on them. 
that leg I was happy I was having issues with the legs and so I thought maybe if I add another layer of acrylic over the forward leg it would look like it's more in front so I'm going to add another layer of that original shimmery light pink over the top of the leg and over like the forearm of that part leave that to set for a second and then you can see me I'm going to take a manicure scissors and I'm going to perform some leg surgery here I'm going to cut it acrylic when it's this thin does cut pretty well so it's not a big deal to do that as far as you won't break other things usually if it's very thin you can just snip it with a manicure scissors and I'm going to fix my leg I felt like it just wasn't quite the right angle so I'm going to just go through and I'm going to touch that up really easy to do something like that like I said a moment ago it's one of the most daunting things to be concerned that your art isn't going to hold up to your standards and it can stop you from doing something or trying something new if that's the case, if you find that happening to yourself, what I like to do when I have that moment is I force myself to do it. And I'm just like, you know what? Stop being a baby. Do it. And then I'm always grateful for it because even if it didn't turn out, it taught me something on how to do it next time. And you don't necessarily have to jump in, you know, feet first. You can slowly ease yourself into whatever art concept is scaring you or or is intimidating so you can just kind of like oh I'm gonna test this and do a little a little element of whatever it is so for me it was always faces it was always people faces and so I started with doing like minimalistic minimalistic faces and then I eased into it and now I draw and paint them all the time so it's one of those just do it and and work your way up to whatever it is that you are wanting to do what your goal is I'm going to attach a spring to the back of my unicorn pegasus. This is a spring that I stole out of a pen that stopped working. And so if you have a pen before you throw it away, I always take the spring out of it. If it's a, a clicker, a clicker pen. And then I just save them and I cut them to length when I need a spring. After I have the spring attached, I'm going to add clear acrylic over the back of my entire shape that I've sculpted. As you saw when I cut the leg, this is not very strong. So before you go and just stick it on the nail and assume you're good to go, make sure that you strengthen the back of this with clear acrylic. There is no excuse not to. It's super thin, even though it's strong enough where it, with that clear, clear acrylic it holds up. Before that, it really wouldn't. I'm going to add a nice little bead of clear acrylic on top of the nail, and I'm going to hold the unicorn in place with the spring until it cures, and then I'm going to add more acrylic over the base of the spring on the nail. Kind of hard to see it around the unicorn's body, but that is what I am doing. Now on a nail form backing with a metallic gold acrylic, I'm going to sculpt my unicorn's horn. Like I said, same process I would have done if I remember to do it previously, but because I didn't, here we are. When I am sculpting this unicorn horn, I would have sculpted it separately no matter what, just to pick it up and place it on, it's going to turn out a little bit better than trying to sculpt it with placing a bead directly on the unicorn's forehead and pulling it into this shape. Once you do have your unicorn horn, you're happy with it, dip it into some nail glue, place it on her forehead, let that set for just a second, smooth out the transition from horn to face, and add some clear acrylic to the underside. Same thing, make sure it's nice and strong. After that's done, detail everything with some acrylic paint. Add details to the body, add details to the wings, to the horn, to the hair. As you're doing this, I'm going to use um, some diluted block paint, some acrylic paint, and I'm going to add kind of a sketchy type of line. So not super realistic detailing here. I'm going to do it more of like a, like a quick sketch, like somebody was sketching her. I'm going to add all of those outlines going around. I love this look. I love when I add shading with uh, strategically placed black lines. So you can see I'm doing that on the legs. That's just one of my favorite styles of art. And so I'm going to do it in that fashion. Same thing like with the eyes. I find it to be very relaxing. It's not quite as structured as doing something that's more realistic. It's more free-flowing and it's just kind of, you know, find the shapes as you go. And I really enjoy it. It works really well to use that diluted black paint to do that style of line. Make sure I'm going over the hair, outlining the ear, adding that detail so that there's a very distinct switch from the unicorn's neck to the mane. I'm going to kind of further sell the feathered look on the wings by adding those little distinguishing lines going through to separate the different feathers and then kind of a line halfway up to um, separate the downy feathers from the flight feathers. Same thing on the other wing. You can see it a little bit more on that one. And then I'm going to add some more lines here and there. Every time I add more of this black, it makes all of the light areas seem even lighter and brighter. I'm going to add a couple of white lines, a little dab here and there to do some highlighting on her. 
Same thing, if you're going for a more realistic style, you won't want to do these bright white spots. But for the particular thing that I was going for, I really like this. She almost reminds me more of like a tattoo style of a unicorn with all the more distinct lines than anything else, which I don't necessarily know is what I was hoping for or aiming for in the beginning, but I really like how she turned out. Add those little lines through the hair. And then after all of that's done and you're happy with it, apply a layer of gel sealer over the background so that those stars are super shiny. And then I'm going to use some matte top coat over Ms. Unicorn and that's it. The matte top coat I'm using over the 3D art is a lacquer, it air dries, it is not a gel polish that needs to go into a lamp and it will dry down and it will look better over the 3D art. And you can wiggle that all around. It's so much fun. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. I am not usually a unicorn sculptor so this one is one of those that I would say was a little daunting. So if I can do it, you can do it. Give it a try and I'd love to see. I'll see you next time. Bye!